last episode was a fantastic start to the round of 32 for Season 5 of BattleBots. Uppercut affirmed why it's the most deadly spinner around. Ray Billings showed us that we were fools for counting Tombstone out. Valkyrie was given a scare by Sub-Zero, but will finally make their first appearance in the top 16. Whiplash once again defeated Huge in their rematch, and head into another rematch against Valkyrie. Beta's configuration against Ribot was a bit of a misfire, as the boys from WPI start to show us what they can really do. Slamo's Cinderella run ended against Black Dragon, and lastly Gigabyte will be the first shell spinner in a round of top 16 since the start of the reboot of BattleBots. So it's going to be really interesting to see what stories come out of this episode. We're going to be looking at the right side of the top 32. A lot of great fights coming up. Let's get in and break them down. All right, so since we don't quite know the order of the fights, let's start off with the second seed, Bloodsport, taking on the number 31 seeds, Gruff. Both of these robots are here for their second season. Bloodsport has really taken the next step. Gruff looked like they were going to, hasn't quite, but this is their chance to really prove themselves. They have looked pretty good throughout the season, specifically in their fight against Hypershock, but also in their fight against Extinguisher, even though that was a shock loss when Gruff completely broke down. The design and the driving of the robot meant that they were dominating that fight for the most part. But that fight really showed us that the wear and tear of the season is getting to Gruff and making it less and less reliable. But even in their top form, it's hard to say whether they're ready to make that next step. Yes, they were hard countered by Whiplash. That is obviously a very tough robot for them to fight. But they were pretty clearly outclassed there. It was a judge's decision, but Gruff barely gave a whimper. Bloodsport, on the other hand, have had a great season. They didn't quite knock out Kronos. That's the only one blemish that they have on their report card. But knockout victories against Scorpios and Endgame really speak for themselves. But if I were Justin Marple, I would still be a little bit worried about this fight. Gruff is an expert at taking on horizontal spinners. They really took it up to Tombstone last season. And while it looks like Bloodsport might have actually surpassed Tombstone as the premier horizontal spinner in BattleBots, it's a little early to call that, perhaps, but it's definitely telling that Bloodsport beat the two robots that Tombstone has lost to in Scorpios and Endgame. So Gruff's going to have to go even harder here than it did against Tombstone there. I don't think Bloodsport has really taken on too many robots of this type. The one that stands out to me is Breaker Box, not nearly as durable as Gruff. There's also Lucky, again, not a particularly tough robot, but I still think it's worth noting that the sheer power of Bloodsport was able to rip out of the wedge of Scorpios, knock the robot out, and that's meant to be a robot that counters horizontal spinners, sorta of in the same way that Gruff is. The best chance for Gruff is obviously the box rush, getting in early before Bloodsport spins up. I mean, it's a story that we've heard plenty of times before, but there really are a couple of issues here for Sam McAmus. Number one is that Gruff doesn't seem that controllable this season, and honestly, Bloodsport does. The fight against Whiplash for Gruff showed us that it is prone to being outmaneuvered, and I think Bloodsport has the capacity to do that on the evidence of a couple of their fights. The other issue is Bloodsport's spin-up time. This is another robot along with Valkyrie and Uppercut that has really improved that aspect of their bot, and it's one that's becoming more and more crucial with every passing season. I said all the way back in Episode 1 that their fight against Scorpios would come down to their spin-up time. I didn't expect their spin-up time to be so fast this season, therefore I tipped Scorpios, but damn if that robot can't recover from an incoming wedge. So there are a couple of things to consider here. While Gruff is the type of robot that is a hard counter against Bloodsport, the sheer durability of these robots alone could set them apart, and it could mean that that rock-paper-scissors-esque paradigm of BattleBots may be subverted in this fight. It just feels like to me Gruff isn't really surviving the season. The wear and tear has just been too much. I mean, they haven't even fixed their forks, for goodness sake. So this will put Bloodsport through to their first round of 16, a milestone that they just missed out on last season. It means that they take on either Fusion or Tantrum, either one of those will make for a fast, aggressive, high power fight, and I can't wait for that. Gruff, on the other hand, well, they made it to the round of 32. That's an achievement in and of itself with the problems that they seem to have been having throughout the season. I don't specifically know what those issues are, but hopefully they can come back next season with those issues rectified and a stronger pit game can translate to a stronger performance in the battle box. It's going to be Bloodsport by knockout for me. 
Okay, so now we have a particularly intriguing matchup. We've got Iron Hill against Reese Hewitt. This is Tantrum against Fusion. Tantrum, Overlooked, Underdogs, the number 18th seeds this season, against Fusion, a new robot with high-powered weapons and some spectacular fights under their belt, the number 15 seeds. I explained in my Top 32 Reactions video that I don't understand why Fusion made it to the 15th seed. Their only wins were against Aegis and War Easy, two robots that haven't even come close to making the top 32. Their one loss was against Mad Kata, which is a quality machine. Fusion definitely worried Martin Mason in that fight, so it definitely scores some points there. But to have it as high as 15 is kind of baffling to me. This is good news, I think, for Iron Hill. I keep saying it, Tantrum is slipping under the radar. They were one breakdown away from going 3-0. However, a lot like Fusion, their two wins came against robots that have definitely underachieved this season, Atom 94 and Gamma 9. So that definitely can explain their lower seeding. The reason that this is good for Iron Hill is that I think BattleBots has rated a robot pretty highly that hasn't quite proven itself. Fusion hasn't lasted the full three minutes in one of its battles yet. Obviously, it hasn't need to with impressive knockouts against Aegis and War Easy, but while it takes absolutely deadly weaponry to score an impressive win over those robots, it's gonna take a whole different skill set to score a victory over Tantrum. It is a tough robot, it's fast, it's maneuverable. Iron Hill's driving has improved tenfold. We've seen it against Gamma 9 completely dominate that fight. Fusion has struggled a little bit. It's been stuck on the floor occasionally. And moments like that are really gonna help Tantrum choose where it attacks from, choose its angles, and land blows exactly where it needs to. As evidenced by its fight against Valkyrie, I reckon that Reese Hewitt's best option here is to go with their vertical spinner head first rather than their horizontal spinner. Tantrum seems to be a pretty good counter to horizontal spinners these days, yet it was troubled by Atom 94's vertical spinner, so I don't see why Reese Hewitt wouldn't lead with that. If he can get the first couple of hits on Tantrum with the vertical spinner, then that's definitely best case scenario. Tantrum will be on the back foot, it will be in trouble, and I reckon that's when you go in with the horizontal spinner and unleash that power. But the thing about Tantrum is that it's gonna survive those hits, it's gonna self right quickly, it's gonna get back on its wheels and out into the space of the arena to regroup, regather, and rally. This is a fight where I'm not sure that that punching vertical spinner is really gonna need to do all that much. Fusion is definitely a robot that you can use its power against if you target that horizontal spinner. The vertical spinner on Tantrum, of course, will help, don't get me wrong, but even if it goes down or the punching mechanism stops working, then this is still a fight that Tantrum can take control of, take to the judges, and demonstrate to the judges that they can still do damage and can still be aggressive just by driving their opponent into the walls and whatnot. As I said, Fusion hasn't proven to me that they can last the full three minutes. It seems like a glass cannon, its reliability is definitely suspect, as we've seen against Mad Catter. While Fusion is no doubt intimidating for Iron Hill to go up against, as an outsider looking in, I think this is a dream matchup for Tantrum in its round of 32. I reckon they can win this pretty convincingly. I'm going to say Tantrum by knockout, and this would put it through up against either Bloodsport or Gruff. As I said, Tantrum is looking like a counter to horizontal spinners. Maybe it has a chance against Bloodsport. I can definitely see it beating Gruff. I don't know, maybe I'm overhyping Tantrum here a little bit, but they really haven't shown me much weakness this season. For Fusion to crash out here, well, I know that the Uwets are gonna give Reese some shit for that, but for an experimental robot with two weapons, as Falcon was back last season, causing all sorts of damage, worrying one of the 3-0 robots, making the top 32, I think it's a pretty good return, not gonna lie. Definitely a robot that we can expect big things from in the future, and this was a good starting base for it. So here we have a very high profile fight between two robots that have been desperate to get to this stage but for very different reasons. First of all, we have Scorpios. This is their first foray into the finals tournament. After going 3-1 and one in their past two seasons, finally they get a taste of the big time. They've had a very impressive run thus far, with wins against Perfect Phoenix and Tombstone, of course, and the only loss coming up against Bloodsport, so you can definitely see why they earned their top 10 seeding. Meanwhile, they're taking on the number 23 seeds, Witch Doctor, and they were desperate to get to this point in their last fight because they were 0-2 coming into that fight against Slamo. Losses against our new resident vert killer, Kraken, and our number one seed, Hydra, aren't really that much of a disgrace to Witch Doctor, but you can really see why they have slipped down 
to the 23rd seed. The main issue for Witch Doctor throughout the season was the dodgy weapon material that they used to cast their original weapon. They've got something new now with help from Blacksmith and Chomp and Sporkinok, as we know, and it stood up really well against a very durable robot, Slamo. This is a fight that I think Zack Lytle was really hoping to avoid until later in the competition. A one on two Witch Doctor in the bracket would always mean that a mid to high tier robot would have to come up against this dangerous team very early on, and it's very unfortunate for Zack Lytle and Diana Tarlson that it just had to be Scorpios. Scorpios has only come up against horizontal spinners this season thus far, and vertical spinners are definitely their kryptonite. As we've seen in the past, their only wins against them have been against a copperhead with teething issues, a hypershock with serious reliability problems, and that's about it. They've previously copped losses to Black Dragon, Lockjaw, Uppercut, and in the past have showed that they don't have a great answer against vertical spinners. But if there are any attachments that Scorpios can use, and there's a vertical spinner that can find a way around them, it's going to be Andre and Mike Galatley's Witch Doctor. There's a reason they were the runners up last season, and now, with that weapon sorted out, I reckon they're going to be hitting some serious form. The one fight that they've had in the past that is comparable to this one against Scorpios is their quarterfinal match against Sawblaze last season really the only other hammer saw in the competition, and they dominated Sawblaze, they really did. It seems like this sort of a robot is pretty hard countered by vertical spinners. This is going to be a fantastic fight between two very aggressive drivers. I expect nothing less than them to be going full tilt for the full three minutes, unless one of them gets knocked out, and I reckon Scorpios doesn't quite have the weaponry to knock out Witch Doctor. If one of them is going to get knocked out, it's going to be Scorpios. We've seen that they were vulnerable to last season's uppercut, which has nowhere near the power of this season's uppercut. So we can see that if Witch Doctor does land those hits, Scorpios may be vulnerable to them. And that's why I'm going to say Witch Doctor by knockout here. This would be very disappointing for Scorpios and Zack Lytle finally making it to the tournament, but crashing out in the first round. This fight could also be playing Witch Doctor into some form. They could be an absolute bracket buster at the 23rd seed. I expect nothing less for them to go deep into this season once more. A win here would be such a relief for Andrea and Mike Galatly. It would really start to prove that last season was no fluke whatsoever. However, it is worth noting that if Scorpios wins here, we could be seeing a much anticipated fight between them and Sawblaze, the two hammer saws in the competition. The next battle is going to be Mats and Kraken against Jamison Go and Sawblaze. This is the 726 matchup. Sawblaze, as always, landing a top 10 seed after yet another impressive main season run. But on the other hand, this is Kraken's first time in the postseason tournament. Matt Spurk has worked very hard to make it this far. Running the fifth seed, Black Dragon, to a close judge's decision, putting up an impressive fight and against a difficult to fight huge, and the jewel in the crown, a defeat of last season's runner up, Witch Doctor. Sawblaze generally only gets beaten by the best robots out there and is mostly vulnerable to those with large high power spinners. It is rare for Sawblaze to get beaten by a robot that doesn't have massive damage potential. We've seen in the past that Sawblaze tends to dominate fights against robots without spinners, the only exception perhaps being their fight against Bronco back in Season 3. Jamison Go enjoys being able to completely dominate a fight, scooping underneath their opponents, taking them around the arena, and smashing them into the walls, all the while being able to do serious damage to them with that hammer saw. It's going to be a fight about who can get underneath whom, whose wheels will be taken off the ground, and who will have the higher pushing power, and also, whether or not Kraken can actually get to grips with Sawblaze, which is a very awkward shape. The problem is then, even if they do, Sawblaze's weapon can still come over the top. Kraken will still be vulnerable to Sawblaze's attacks, even if it is gripped on. So Jemison Go definitely has some recourse if he finds himself pinned by Kraken's bite. It's definitely a rough matchup for Kraken to have drawn in the top 32. They are a certified vert killer, and there are plenty of vertical spinners still in the competition. It's a real shame that they haven't drawn one to show that they can advance on in the competition against the right machines, but I really think Sawblaze has their number here. Their ability to control a fight, overpower Kraken, and perhaps get that hammer saw through the top of Kraken's head, maybe disabling the weapon, I think that's going to be too much. It has to be said, though, that Kraken's opponents often find it very difficult to knock this robot out, so I think this might look a lot like Sawblaze's fight against Ribot last season, where it was basically all Sawblaze bullying Ribot all around the arena, not giving them a chance, but not being able to knock them out either. The same also went for Rusty in Sawblaze's most recent fight, but yeah, I think it, the case is that even if Matt Spurk is able to get around the back of Sawblaze, 
Snowblaze, they're not going to be able to do enough damage, and they can also still get fended off by that weapon. But yeah, it's going to be Snowblaze by judge's decision. And the choices here are pretty fascinating, between fighting Scorpios in an all hammer saw battle, or Witch Doctor, which would be a rematch from the quarterfinals last season. That's going to be very interesting to see. It's also worth noting that if Kraken win here, they could be fighting against Witch Doctor again, which is a very enticing matchup. However, I don't think we'll see that. Kraken has had a great year. It's been awesome to see them improve once again and prove how much they are a danger to the vertical spinner meta of BattleBots these days. So back in Season 2, the last time that we had a top 32, the 330 matchup was definitely the biggest upset BattleBots had seen to that point, with Witch Doctor being defeated by Red Devil. I think if this were an upset, we'd probably have a new leader for biggest upset in BattleBots history. Here we have Ricky Willems, one of the most passionate builders you will find, and his robot Mammoth, much improved from last season. They're taking on Copperhead, Zach Goff, and Team Caustic Creations have a long history in this sport. This has definitely been their best season thus far. It wasn't too hard to see coming, I guess. Copperhead looked very dangerous last season. They just had some reliability issues. But coming into this year, I think if you had said Copperhead was one of the top three robots in the competition, there definitely would have been about five or six names that I could have thrown out to challenge that. But right now, they are looking on top of their game. They've had a fantastic season. They went 3-0. Defeats of P1, Gigabyte, and Black Dragon have earned them the accolades they deserve. Not only that, the robot seems to be working pretty flawlessly, and they look very set up for a deep run in this competition. First, they have to get past Mammoth with wins against Huge and Deadlift, but most importantly here, a loss against Hypershock. That was the only vertical spinner that they did fight during this season. They also lost to Uppercut last year, obviously. Yeah, it just seems that vertical spinners are still obviously a weakness for Mammoth to go against. I'm not sure how much theory crafting is required to figure out the result of this battle. I'm just gonna say Copperhead by Knockout. I would love to see Mammoth come in with some sort of attachment or armor that will work against a vertical spinner. We didn't see it against Hypershock. I don't think we're gonna see it here. This is probably gonna be a carbon copy of Mammoth's fight against Hypershock, perhaps over even more quickly because Copperhead is such a deadly machine. I don't think it's going to take long for them to do terminal damage to the frame of Mammoth or the weapon, probably turn them over and Mammoth won't be able to self right. So this has been a great season for Mammoth to be able to show off what they can do with that insane design. I think they've gained a lot of fans this season. They've shown us that it's not just a novelty and displayed that they're here to win BattleBots and not just try out what might have been seen as a gimmicky design. Copperhead, of course, will move on out of all the top four seeds. This is the robot I see as most likely to make it out of the quadrant and into the semifinals. Down the line, I think Endgame is probably the only robot that can worry them. I just have such a growing respect for this team, and they're in a great position now to go all the way. The 14-19 matchup for this season is between two robots who went 2-1 on the season. Neither of them had the most convincing fights, however they now both have a chance to make their mark on the season and reach the top 16. Donald Hudson has of course been there before. Last season he reached the quarterfinals, the season before that the semis. Donald himself has all the experience in the world, is one of the best drivers in the competition, and while we all know this, his robot doesn't always get the credit it deserves. However, this season might be a little bit different, since indeed Lockjaw has now been underperforming. Neither win against Captain Shredderator nor new robot Big Dill were particularly convincing. The weapon didn't survive either of them, and they lost against the newcomer budget bot Jackpot, where once again their weapon went down. As we move on to Shatter, we can see that Adam Wrigley has picked his strategies throughout the season and executed them perfectly. The one hiccup being against Malice, where the strategy didn't particularly impress the judges. We did exactly what we wanted to do and it didn't work. So if the judges saw something else, we want to figure out what it was. However, the wins against Ghost Raptor and more so at Captain Shredderator were quite convincing, and Shatter is getting its first look at the big time, and with the demise of Beta, it is the only Hammerbot left in the competition. The main strength that a Hammerbot can have generally is its durability, and Shatter has that in spades. We have not seen it knocked out often during its career, and the armor has been absolutely perfect at being able to protect the frame of Shatter even against a robot as punishing as Captain Shredderator can be. Looking at this fight, Shatter doesn't have a particularly great record against vertical spinners. It is a small sample size, however, a little bit larger if we expand that to blue in China, 
However, now I think Shatter's really finding its groove. This is definitely the best form that it's been in. And when it comes to Lockjaw, it's hard to say because it is so unreliable, yet the team is so experienced. So that pit crew will know how to sort things out behind the scenes. They'll be trying their damnedest to make sure that Lockjaw is right for this top 32. But based on the evidence of the past three fights, Lockjaw could be a bit of a write-off for this season. To defeat Shatter, that weapon is going to have to be going full pelt for the full three minutes. And I don't know if that vertical spinner has it in it this season. I think Adam Wrigley, on the other hand, he just needs to be patient. He needs to play this pretty similarly as he did the Captain Shredderator fight. I'm pretty confident he'll be able to absorb the attacks. If he gets flipped over, that hammer is very good at self-writing. And yeah, I don't see Lockjaw's weapon surviving long in this fight. I reckon Shatter will start being able to rain down the hammer blows with impunity for the last minute and a half perhaps even two minutes of the fight. And who knows, that might even be enough to break Lockjaw. However, I can see Lockjaw just surviving the fight. I reckon it'll go down to a judge's decision, and I think they will find Shatter the more impressive of the two robots. So in a season with a lot of quality missing, Lockjaw going out in the round of 32 will continue to show us just how wide open this season is, because that is a quality robot that in most circumstances, you'll be able to count on going far. Shatter, I've been very impressed with this season. Hammerbots are a bit hit and miss, pardon the pun, but here is one that knows how to handle itself against some of the more elite robots of the competition, and it'll show that especially if it wins here. So after three seasons, the New Zealanders have nearly made it. They've been rewarded a top 16 seeding position. Now can they make it to this top 16 overall? Standing in their way is Child Prodigy Tai Lung Nguyen and Perfect Phoenix. The Hazard-esque overhead spinning bar built by Paul Ventimiglia, improved by Ray Billings, driven by Tyler and the number 27 seed. Perfect Phoenix hasn't looked bad in its first season. It does make sense to me, however, that it is only the 27th seed. They knocked out Extinguisher, not the toughest of opposition, and then also won a pushing match against Atom94, the only robot that we have actually seen go 0-3 this season. The loss was definitely respectable. They came up against Scorpios and were definitely able to throw a couple of punches, but it has to be said that that 2-on-1 record definitely comes with a fairly soft strength of schedule. Endgame, on the other hand, also 2-1, but with a much harder run. They took out Ray Billings and Tombstone in the first main event of the season. They lost to the second seeds Bloodsport and then made quick work of Will Bales and Hypershock. Three quality machines for Endgame, and Nick Maybe and Jack Barker have come through looking pretty good. They have definitely earned their place in the number six seed. Horizontal spinners have been a bit of a worry in the past for Endgame. Even with that Tombstone win, they did struggle to take a hit from Bloodsport, and the only other win against a horizontal spinner they've had was against Captain Shredderator in their very first fight in Season 3. Those beefy wedges, however, new for this season, will probably stand them in good stead to take on a bar spinner that hasn't quite proven itself yet. Sure they one shot at Extinguisher? That was definitely impressive and quite scary, and that is a robot that stood up against Gigabyte for some time as well, it must be said. But against Adam94, we could see how Perfect Phoenix was vulnerable to a vertical spinner throwing it across the arena. That being combined with the energy of their own weapon could really see it on the back foot. Endgame looks a lot faster this season, they look like they're driving it a lot better. They even look more agile, and I can see them being able to chase Perfect Phoenix across the arena and take advantage of any moments that they're out of balance. I don't know if they're going to rip that bar off like Jackpot did to Ghost Raptor, but there's definitely a chance. Like, I'd be worried if I were Tyler Nguyen, and even if it doesn't come off, that bar could end up smoking out like it did against Scorpios and against Adam94. I don't know, without a particularly lucky shot, I don't see how Perfect Phoenix can score a win here against Endgame, especially with those wedges on the front. And this is a 6 versus 20 seven matchup definitely the safe bet to go for end game here and it's going to be i reckon by knockout especially from that scorpios fight perfect phoenix hasn't quite proven its durability just yet so it'll be great to finally see the kiwis march on to the round of 16 and that's not just because they're our buddies from across the ditch it's always been a robot with heaps of potential they had quite a rough run last season and it's good to know that their progress is no longer stagnant all right this is it the last battle the 11-22 matchup, Jackpot against Rotator. Definitely two robots we've had a close eye on throughout the season. Rotator starting off really poorly, 0-2 from losses against Beta and against Valkyrie. Salvaged their season with a win against Big Deal late on in the season. But despite all that, Victor Soto's robot has always looked impressive. Those two losses were probably the strongest losses that we've seen this season. But no doubt that win over Emmanuel Carrillo was crucial. Jackpot, on the other hand, the $4,000 budget bot has come out of nowhere. Well, 
out of Nevada anyway. They were the only newcomer this season to score 3-0 with wins against Sub-Zero, Ghost Raptor, and Lockjaw. And while they've been winning this whole time, their performance has been improving throughout the season pretty dramatically. Just look at the way that they were driving against Lockjaw when compared with how they were driving against Sub-Zero. Jeff Waters has built a serious robot and has earned his seeding at number 11 and will definitely be a match for Victor Soto. So I do think that there is a stark difference between the quality of these machines. However, the thing that complicates this is Rotator's history against vertical spinners. The robot has always been a prime target for a good vertical spinner, be it Bite Force, Witch Doctor, Death Roll, even Bombshell worried it a little bit. So Jackpot might have the advantage in the counter game. The thing is, Rotator is so bloody durable these days. We saw it survive the fight against Death Roll. While the weapon broke there, I think the weapon is a lot more durable this season as well, as evidenced by their fight against Valkyrie. So I don't see that breaking, especially not in the way that Jackpot broke Ghost Raptor's weapon. I'd say Victor Soto will come in with Rotator as an undercutter and he'll probably have the forks at the back once more. That seems to be his go-to strategy for a vertical spinner. But yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how he approaches this fight. Getting around the sides is probably the best way to go, but that is much easier said than done. However, having said that, if Rotator does take a few hits, I don't think it worries them too much. I still think they'll be able to get around the side and exploit the weaknesses of Jackpot's build. See, I don't know how much structural rigidity $4,000 can buy you in BattleBots. And I can see Jackpot succumbing to Rotator's weapon. And having said that, it was a great run for Jackpot. I think it was fantastic to see a newcomer step up this season, go 3-0 on a budget. It's a great theme. They've obviously got some Las Vegas pride right there. It is just kind of unlucky that they had to come up against such a quality robot that has had an unlucky season this time around. Rotator will move on, and I think a fight against Endgame will be one of the best of the season if that is how it pans out. Can't wait for that. But yeah, rotator by knockout. So that is it for the round of 32. We've gone through it all. By the time these fights have been fought, we'll know who's in the round of 16. Yeah, it's really heating up. Uh, just in summary, I'm going to go through... But yeah, it's really heating up. Uh, just in summary, I'm going for Bloodsport by Knockout, Tantrum by Knockout, Sawblaze by Judge's Decision, Witch Doctor and Copperhead both by Knockout, Shatter by Judge's Decision, and then Endgame and Rotator by Knockout. After this, only two episodes remain of BattleBots Season 5. A sad thought indeed, but very exciting, because finally we'll be able to know who can win this competition when Bite Force isn't around. Uh, but yeah, have a good one, guys. Uh, thanks for the really kind messages last episode. Really appreciate it. And from now on, hopefully nothing will hinder our run towards the end. All right, like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. And bloody have a good one.